Funding for this channel is provided by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello. We are currently in front of my bookshelf, specifically in front of my one, two, three TBR shelves. TBR means to be read, meaning these are the only three shelves that I have yet to read, discluding the book of the month shelves and the Dutch language shelves. We're only talking about these three today. Okay, this is accountability. So today's <laughs> video is simple. We are going to go through all of the books that I have yet to read in English that I spent my own money on. That's the fine print. First of all, it's my job to read books. Second of all, I love books. Books are my thing. Thirdly, I want to own a house one day and have an entire room full of books and have one of those Beauty and the Beast ladders that roll from side to side. So this is my collection. This is my thing. This is my interest. My calves hurt. Let's just jump into it. Let's start with the bottom shelf. Shall we? Yes. We've got the swimmers. This is about a group of swimmers. It's a character study, I believe. It's been taking me a little longer than I anticipated. I wanted to read this this summer. I didn't get around to it. It happens. But I'm still really excited. And look at how pretty it is. Great. One book down. Off to a great start. <laughs> We've got the entire Chronicles of Narnia. I've never read these books. I saw the first movie when I was a youth. A friend of mine was going to get rid of this, so she gave it to me, and I've had it ever since. Did you love this series? Please tell me about it because I need some hype. I heard it's a metaphor for God, so I'm a little... Yeah, you know. Food of the Gods, The Search for the Original Tree of Knowledge, A Radical History of Plants, Drugs, and Human Evolution by Terence McKenna. This is a book that I've had since high school. I don't know how it made it to Belgium. I don't know, when I was 15, I went on some kind of like transcendental kind of kick. I got this from Borders Bookstore. That shows the age of this book. I'm not gonna do hallucinogenics. I don't know who I thought I was. I'll read it eventually. The Conquest of Happiness by Bertrand Russell. I studied philosophy for a semester, and before I started that, I watched some video of a woman recommending five philosophical books. This was on the list. Russell attempts to diagnose the myriad causes of unhappiness in modern life. Maybe someday. Eastern philosophy, the greatest thinkers and sages from ancient to modern times. Incense semester of studying philosophy. It was all Western. It was all a bunch of dead white guys. And I wanted to expand on that. That's all. Faithless by Karen Slaughter. I found this in one of those little free book nook library things. And I was just so jazzed because I love Karen Slaughter and also it's in English and I'm in Belgium. It also smells great because the pages are yellowed. Horror, mystery, murder. You get the jizz. Jizz? Jizz. Next, Taoism, An Essential Guide by Eva Wong. When I was working in a camera house in Ithaca, New York, I had a burnout, breakdown, meltdown of sorts and didn't understand it at all. And I took two weeks off of work. And when I returned to work, I expected to be fired from said job. And instead, my boss gifted me with this little 360 days of Taoism book. And I turned that book off to when I'm journaling, one of the most sweetest, most cherished items I own. And so I just wanted to learn more about this philosophy, way of life, mindset. Boom. Regarding Motherhood, a study by Orna Donna. This is a nonfiction that chronicles a few people who had babies and regretted having babies. We don't talk about it enough, do we? No. The Conquest of Bread by Peter Kropotkin. It's from the 1800s. It critiques capitalism. Right up my alley. Blank by the author of The Tipping Point, Malcolm Gladwell. This is a self-help book. Again, had it for a long time. Somehow this book made it to Belgium and not my favorite Kazooie Isha Girl book. Make it make sense. This is a nonfiction about how little things can make a big difference. I'm not super in my self-help era right now, so I'm not sure when I'm going to read this one, but I will someday. I, I believe. Little Miss P the second day. This is a manga that my friend Michelle got me into. It's about a personified period. The first one is one of the funniest things I've ever read in my entire life. Tales of the Unexpected by Raul Dahl. I have had this short story collection on my shelf since like 2016, but it just keeps getting put off because anthologies are one of my least favorite books to read. But I love Raul Dahl. He wrote Matilda. He wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I mean, you can't go wrong, right? I'm sweaty. I'm sweaty. The book by Alan Watts. Another one of those transcend your mind kind of religion and philosophy book from my first years of high school. Again, how did you get here? The Knowledge of Illusion is a nonfiction about why it's so hard to change people's beliefs and why we believe that our beliefs are fact and all that jazz. It sounds super interesting. I've also had this one for quite a minute, but it's just such a specific kind of nonfiction. So yeah, I still haven't read her. White Teeth by Zadie Smith. I got this one recently. I love the cover of it. I haven't seen this cover anywhere. I'm pretty sure it's about a family. I'm pretty sure it's super character heavy. Zadie Smith is a super big deal. I haven't read anything by Smith yet. I'm really excited to get around to it, but I'm very intimidated by the link. I gotta be honest. The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. This was recommended by Gabby Reeds. It's a scary book about a kid and some men approach him and say none of this is your fault and I don't really know much else but I trust Gabby's opinion. The Constellations of Philosophy by Elaine de Baton. Another one of those philosophical books that were recommended in that video that I mentioned a little bit ago. A few philosophers thoughts and opinions are combined and outlined and it's supposed to be really good. Pan's Labyrinth. You know Pan's Labyrinth. It's a movie. I thought that this was the book that it came from but the movie came first and then the book came and I think that's why I haven't picked it up yet. The fact that the movie came first is so unique and strange and I guess I just don't know how to act. Am I supposed to watch the movie first if the movie came first? It's about a little girl and there's a maze question mark and it's kind of spooky 
Coraline vibes question mark. I don't know. Have you read it? Another one of the books that were in that philosophical video, The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera. I'm a little intimidated by her. It's from the 1980s. It's supposed to answer a bunch of philosophical questions. I guess it's sad. For some reason, I feel like this takes a big brain to understand and I feel intimidated. Breath by James Nestor. This is a nonfiction about breathing and how important it is. <laughs> My favorite professor recommended this one to me when I dropped out of college for the second time. I just thought it was so sweet that my email of letting him know that I was dropping out was met with a book recommendation. So I bought it immediately. No questions asked. How not to die. I've had this book on my shelf forever. I read the chapters about depression and depression only, but I seriously intend to read all of the other ones because I just want to learn more about food. Something I did learn from this that has stuck around me forever is that tomatoes are really great for depression. They're good for giving serotonin to your brain, but the only way to get those tomato serotonins to your brain is to eat carbs with it because the carbs act as like a little choo-choo train to get the tomato serotonin up to your brain. Carbs are important is the theme. I'll read it. I'll read it. Manufacturing consent. This one is about the 24 hour news cycle and how horribly misleading and damaging it is to our brains. Walden and Civil Disobedience by Henry David Thoreau. I read this one when I was like 14 or 15 years old and I really, really liked it, but I know that there is so much more that I can get from it now that I'm older. Karen Slaughter's The Good Daughter. I love Pretty Girls, as disgusting as it was. She makes giant books like this, so not intimidating because her writing flows so well. People say that this one and Pretty Girls are the best too, so this Halloween, I'll be reading her. The Voices Within. I read some of this. This is about how all of our minds think differently. Some of us talk to ourselves using language. Some of us imagine pictures. Some of us have nothing at all. No thoughts had empty. The Pig That Wants to Be Eaten and 99 Other Thought Experiments by Julian Bagini. Honestly, I got this one after watching The Good Place. I was just interested in more experiments of the mind. A House in the Sky by Amanda Lind. How this is an autobiographical memoir and how she was kidnapped and held hostage for 460 days. I've had this one since I think 2020 and I'm a little freaked out by it. And I think that's why I haven't picked it up yet. Dune. Exactly. How Cruise Can Change Your Life by Alain de Patton. This is the guy who wrote The Constellations of Philosophy. And a friend of mine found this in one of those free libraries and she just gave it to me on a whim. It was really sweet. I don't know Jack about Proust. Proust? Proust? Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk. I love Chuck Palahniuk in high school, um, but the more I read him, the less I like him. But I know I need to read this one because Fight Club used to be one of my favorite movies in high school. I know, red flag. But I'm really curious about the original. Okay, it's getting dark because of this giant stack of books. <laughs> Better? Yes. Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Safran Foer. This is the author who wrote Eating Animals and also, what the f is that book called? That's gonna drive me crazy now. The one about 9-11. Extremely loud and incredibly close. That's the one that everyone knows by him. Cersei by Madeline Miller. I gave this one a soft DNF, as you can see by my bookmark in it. The writing just didn't flow for me and I was really bored, but I know that it's a big deal and I know I have to read it. So it's on the TBR shelf because I will be revisiting. Don't scream at me. Greek mythology, retelling, women. Apparently it's not gay, so I'm less interested to be honest. Make something up, stories you can't unread by Chuck Palahniuk. Again, it's Chuck Palahniuk, so that's been kind of making me hesitate a little bit, but also it's a collection of short stories. I'm so warm, I can feel my bones one second. Okay, let's take a deep breath together as friends. I don't know why this is stressing me out. So many books, so little time. This is accountability. I'm overwhelmed. What was I saying? Not an anthology girl. We've talked about this. That Dead Man Dance by Kim Scott. I don't know if this book isn't in print anymore or what, but it was so hard to find. This is about indigenous people in Australia. And I bought it because I saw this quote online from it that said something like, we learned about your food and your dance and your culture and we didn't know you had no interest in learning ours. Owies. Also, I'm obsessed with this cover. Look it. How nice. Very excited to have found this used online. All right, here's the thing. I bought the fairy book because Lily C. Reads has a series where she reads Harry Potter for the first time. And I remember watching that when it first came out thinking, that's genius. It's a series that everyone has read. What a fun experience it is to watch someone experience it for the first time and make predictions and everything. I thought I could do that with the fairy book, but then I re-downloaded the clock app and the clock app is very upset with Sarah J. Mass for seemingly very good reasons. So I don't know what to do now. I already own the fairy book. Do I read it? Is burning it bad? What should I do with it. <laughs> and I've been totally awful. My closet is chock full of stuff. One shelf down, one to go. Next, Playing Nights by J.P. Delaney. This is about two families who had babies at the same time, but they went home with the wrong babies. And so what do you do years later when one family tells you that they have your baby and you have their baby? It's a thriller. I'm intrigued. Beloved by Toni Morrison. Toni Morrison is understandably a very big deal. So this year I made the promise that I will be reading more from her. This one takes place during the 
1800s in America. I hear it is heartbreaking. Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. This is a super short story about two people in London, I believe. They're in school. It's a character study. Everyone loves this book, so I'm really looking forward to it. A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. I actually have two books by Ruth Ozeki. I also have The Tale of Form of Emptiness, The Book of Form and Emptiness, <laughs> because I recently did Summer Splash, and several of my fellow Summer Splashers had one of these books as their favorite. From my understanding, they're both from a child's point of view. This one is in the British Columbia after a tsunami, and then this one is about a boy who loses his father and starts to hear voices. I don't know which one to start with. I think I'm just gonna go chronologically, but then also I hear that everyone likes this one more than this one. So I don't wanna set myself up for disappointment, but also this one sounds more personally interesting to me, so I don't know where to begin. I Want to Die But I Wanna Eat Tabuki by Beck Shea. This is a nonfiction translated from Korean and it follows our author through just a few days, a few conversations with their psychiatrist. I hear it's very real. Also, what a relatable title. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, otherwise known as Tomorrow Times Three by Gabrielle Zevin. This follows two friends across decades and apparently it's super video game heavy and everyone loves it. So I'm a little nervous to see where I stand, but I have high hopes for it. Resuscitative by Toni Morrison. This is the second of the three Morrisons that I have right now. I believe that this is what inspired The Vanishing Half because it follows two people, one white, one black, and you don't know which is which. And I think you're supposed to pick up through context clues and what the world around you and the stereotypes it holds makes you believe. It seems really profound. It's really short. I'm really interested. You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Kwake Meze. The opening line of this one really sold me and I hear that it's a romance that doesn't follow typical romance story beats. Philosophy by Elizabeth Day. Kirsty gifted this one to me and honestly because it was so short it got pushed down the TBR to the end and it hid behind this little wood part and so now that it's been uncovered yet again I'm really looking forward to reading it. It's a non-fiction about what to do when things go wrong, about how failure is inevitable and also a gift I believe. Uh, I trust Kirsty's opinion. I was hoping to do an unhinged women reading video of sorts or maybe a breakdown or I'm not sure but the more books I acquired and the more more I brainstorm, the bigger the project becomes, but also the more I read unhinged women's stories, the more all of the same they are. I'm not sure where I'm gonna go with it, but just know that the next few books are gonna have a theme. One of the OG unhinged girlies is the main character in Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. I think why I haven't picked this one up quite yet is because I watched the movie and so I know the twist and that's a big bummer, but I still have high hopes that this one will still be good despite me knowing what happens. Motherhood by Shayla Hetty. I recently read Pure Color by Shayla Hetty and I loved her writing style so, 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 so much that I immediately bought another book from her. Animal by Lisa Tadeo. Again, I got this only because it fits in the unhinged category. I personally don't know if it's for me. I guess we'll find out. There's no such thing as an easy job by Kakuku Samura. This is about a woman who wants to find an easy job as the title suggests, but then also as the title suggests, she learns that there's no such thing. I feel like this is right up my alley. I feel like this one is really gonna punch me in the gut. I've had this on my radar for so long, so it has to happen soon. The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Need I say more? One of the first unhinged women. Classic. I haven't read it. We'll see. My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshveg. I read Eileen by Moshfag, and seeing as I don't like pedophile or reading about pedophilia, I swore off Moshfag. But all the hot girls say that this is one of the unhinged women books. I really am fully convinced I will not like this one. I don't like reading about rich people, and I didn't like my last Moshfag. And also, my friend was reading Labona, and there's pedophile in that one too. So I hear there's no pedophilia in this one, but you don't get points for that, Moshfag. You just don't. Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. I read In the Dream House by Machado and was so impressed with it. Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. There's only a few unhinged women books left, I swear. A woman takes pictures of men she wants to sleep with, I guess. It's meant to be like twisting the male gaze on its head and it's from a woman instead or something. But I've also heard very bad things about this book. I don't have the highest of hopes, but it fits the bill. The Yellow Wallpaper and Selected Writings by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. I read Her Land by Charlotte Perkins Gilman when I was in college and was so impressed with it. And I've heard nothing but good things about The Yellow Wallpaper. Again, an OG classic women in mental illness kind of story. Bunny by Mona Awad. I think I'll like this one. The reviews are so, so extra torn. People either really love it or really hate it. It's about a group of girls called the bunnies in high school and another girl joins them, which really doesn't give you much, but I hear it's really, really weird. And I think it's my kind of weird. We'll see. Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. It follows a bunch of different women who are living very different lives. Here's a guaranteed positive read. <laughs> Pisces by Melissa Broder. I really love my reading experience with Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. This is another book that has people torn right down the middle. I was going to buddy read this one with Kirsty and Alex, but the timings kept getting rescheduled and then Alex got around to it before anyone else and she didn't really like it and so now I'm nervous to read it, but I just need to read it already. Oh yeah, it's about a woman having sex with a fish. 
Next, the Panopticon by Jenny Fagan. A Panopticon is a prison slash mental health institution that's in a circle and so there are eyes on you at all times. We follow a 15 year old girl. I hear it's really heartbreaking and really good. Bonnie and Ichu's Guide to Fake Dating by Adiba Shakirdar. I love that award so much so it was a no brainer to pick up this one. It was a YA romance about two girls in high school. Fake dating slash haters to lovers. Hating to loving. Haters to lovers? Is it really just called that? Angry to loving. What? That trope, you know what I mean. Lost Children Archive by Valeria Lucelli. I know that this is a fictional story that is all too real. Feels non-fictional about a family and the border of Mexico and the United States and how that can tear apart families. And I also have another book by her that I think I wanna read first. It sounds heartbreaking. The Yearbook by Holly Bourne. Okay, I saw this one new in a store and just look at it, okay? The dramas, the traumas, the rumors. It's time to expose it all. It seems so bad it's good. So I picked it up and I read the first page. You're not ready. The first line of dialogue states, can I borrow your mascara? My eyelashes look like they've become freaking dot 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 vegan question mark? What does that mean? What does that mean? I have so many questions. What does that mean? It has Mean Girls energy and I saw it at a thrift shop later for a buck with pink bright edges. So she's here. I own her now. The Body and Pain by Elaine Scarry. I cannot believe I haven't read this one yet. This has been on the top of my TBR forever and somehow it keeps getting pushed down. It's about the phenomenology of pain. How everyone's experiences with pain is different. The ways that everybody treats and remedies their pain is different. How placebos aren't placebos if they work. It just sounds so good and it was recommended slash referenced in a Dear Hank and John podcast and I've been wanting to read it ever since. It has to happen. Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This is a cozy fantasy about two ogre slash some kind of fantastical women being in love and running a coffee shop. It sounds so cute. Right up my alley. So perfect for fall time. The Girl with the Lounging Voice by Abby Dari. This is about a teenage girl in a Nigerian village and how she pursues an education to get her louding voice. Another one of those books that I've heard nothing but good things about. Also look how colorful and gorgeous it is. Ah! Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McKiston. This was really popular when I first started BookTube and the cover really turned me off. I wasn't into romances yet, so I didn't pick it up. But recently I read One Last Stop by Casey McKiston and I absolutely loved it. And so I picked up this one, assuming that I would love it as well. But then I read I Kissed Shira Wheeler by McKiston and I hated it so much. It was one of my least favorite reads of this year. So now I have no idea what to feel. The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I saw the movie that was inspired by this and wanted to pick up the original book ever since. And only after buying it did I realize that it was YA. So I really don't know. But it's about rich people. A poor girl is about to inherit everything. I don't know. TikTok loves it, which makes me think I won't like it. <laughs> Boy by Sean Thor Conroe. This is one that I picked up at the bookstore because I loved the cover and also when I read the first page, I was immediately sold. It has the flavor of like literary fiction character study. So very artsy, but then from a boy's perspective. And that just is a beautiful juxtaposition for me. I'm so interested. No Matter the Wreckage by Sarah Kay. This is a collection of poems. The Afro Minimalist Guide to Living with Less by Christine Platt. This is a nonfiction that our author was inspired to write because a lot of minimalism is centered around extremely rich white people. And so this is a more realistic take from what I understand. Pigeon English by Stefan Kelman. This one I got secondhand, so it kind of looks like it got run over by a car. It follows a little boy in Ghana. Not only do I love books that are from children's perspectives, but I love books that can teach me something new about somewhere I've never been. You're the only one I've told. A doctor from Planned Parenthood collected a bunch of people's stories and experiences with abortions and compiled them into one to show people what this experience and life-saving procedure is really like. Seems really important. Hopi Show by Leon Ross. How have I not read you, you gorgeous, gorgeous book. This book is an assumed new favorite of mine. Once I read it, I need to read it. It takes place on an island. It's magical realism. All of our characters have a special power, kind of like an X-Men and Kanto sort of situation. But every review that I see online says that the synopsis does not prepare you for what the book actually has. So I'm just, I cannot believe I haven't read it yet. I don't know what it is. How have I not read this one yet? Casadora by Romina Garver. This is the second book to the Lobizona duology. It's about a girl who's meant to be a witch, but ends up being a werewolf instead. I don't know, I really liked the first one. I thought it was just such a fun YA magical space to be in. The covers are absolutely to die for. So I'm really excited to read this one during the spooky times. Once There Were Wolves by Charlotte McConaughey. This is also a spooky book, but also an environmental book about two sisters who help incorporate wolves back into the mountains. Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. This is a YA fantasy about a girl whose brother gets turned into cranes because she has forbidden magic. The internet loves this one. And so I just think that this would be such a great book to turn to when 
and I just want effortless, fun, fantastical reading. Sundial by Catriona Ward. This is a thriller. It takes place in a desert and it has something to do with mother-child relationships. Envy question mark? Hatred question mark? Murder question mark? And then I have three beautiful classic books that I am meant to read for a reading so-and-so's favorite books, but I just have such big plans for the video. It needs to be a little cooler outside and I need to be in the classic mood, which I am never, but I'm gonna do it, I swear. So we have The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, The Secret Garden, and this is such a beautiful edition. There's like pop-ups and stuff. And then last but not least, the one that I'm least excited for, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. This one is as classic-y classic as it gets. I just have a feeling that I won't be able to follow this one. Okay. That's it for this shelf. Third TBR shelf. Go! Moth by Melody Razak. This is about the partition split between Pakistan and India. It's a family saga. Chouette by Claire Oshetsky. This is about a woman who gives birth to an owl. Next, Audrey Lord's a Black Unicorn. This is Baby's First Audrey Lord. It's a collection of her poetry. Evan by Miko Kawakami. One of my favorite books is by Miko Kawakami. It's called Miss Ice Sandwich. And so there are two Kawakamis on my TBR shelf right now. The second we will get to very soon. <laughs> Sula by Toni Morrison. This is the third Morrison that I have on my TBR shelf. One of my favorite podcasts said that this is a great story about female friendships. Had to happen. The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. This has been on my radar for literal years. It's about things going missing and draconian police force removing people's memories or something and you don't know why. Allie Smith's companion piece. I got this one so I could be introduced to Allie Smith and then I received a comment saying that really I should read all of the seasons before reading this because this is a companion piece to those seasons books. So I'm gonna do it. I am. I'm gonna get all four and I'm gonna read all five. I'm gonna do it properly, I promise. Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfeld. I am so so excited for this one. It's one of my most anticipated books of this year. It's about lesbians and the ocean and one of them goes missing and then returns, but then the other one knows that that one is not her wife. Everyone loves this one. I'm gonna love this one. I'm gonna move my caterpillar. These next four books I got to read somebody's favorite books. I've just been really nervous to do reading so-and-so's favorite books because I'm not good at lying when I don't like something and I don't wanna make people feel bad if I don't like one of their favorite books, but I'm gonna do it. This fall, I'm gonna do this one. However, I'm waiting for a fifth one because recently in one of their videos, they said that A Starless Sea is their top favorite favorite book and I can't read their favorite books without reading the favorite book. You know what I mean? You probably know who it is at this point. Anyway, Robin Hobbs, an assassin's apprentice, a pleb who gets adopted by rich people and then becomes the assassin for the rich people. Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. Ginormous. The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I think that this is the reason why I've been putting off this video because I really don't think I'm gonna like this one because I did DNF Cersei. Also, I don't know anything about Greek mythology. I really don't. Somebody actually spoiled the ending for me <laughs> because I wasn't familiar with the original story that it's from, but that's fine. That's my fault. That story is like a thousand years old. But this one's gay. So that's great. And then Summer Suns by Lee Mandelo. This was one of my most anticipated books of last year. It's queer, it's gothic. It's about two boys who are friends and one of them dies. And so the other friend is trying to understand the truth of what happened. Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake. This is a nonfiction about mushrooms. It just sounds so good. I can't wait to read it. Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. This is a short novella kind of horror story. I believe our characters are hunting KKK members. We're reading this in October for the Pocket Page book club if you're interested. The Undocumented Americans is by the author who wrote Lost Children Archive. This is the one that I want to read first. So this is a collection to explore all of the different experiences of being undocumented in the United States. As Long as the Grass Grows by Dina Gilio Whitaker. This is a nonfiction about the many trials and tribulations that indigenous people have gone through in the United States in order to achieve some kind of environmental justice. Spoiler alert, I know there's been no official announcement, but this is the November read for Pocket Pages. And then also, for the first time ever, there's going to be a companion buddy read extra credit situation because it's like a little children's book. It's called I Lost My Talk by Rita Jo, and it's a very short picture book about how indigenous language has been erased. The Buried Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro. Ishiguro wrote one of my favorite books, Never Let Me Go. This is a more mystical one, I believe. The synopsis tells me nothing, but it's Ishiguro, so. Travelers by Helen Avila. It's about modern Europe and how it's a melting pot for all these different cultures, and so it follows a bunch of people from a bunch of different places, including Nigeria, Libya, Somalia. Look at the cover. Look how cute. I can't wait. An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. I was gonna read this one with Turtles All the Way Down by John Green as a kind of Green Brothers reading vlog. Once I got my awesome socks, I signed up for their awesome socks charity and I paid for it for six months and I never got a single pair. That's no fault on them. If you ship something with the USPS to Europe in just standard mail, nine times out of 10, it gets lost. So this is a YA about our protagonist who has OCD. And then this one is about aliens question mark and the internet and how strange the internet is. I've heard great things about both. Home Going by Yag Yassi. It follows two sisters who live extremely different lives. One sold into slavery in Mississippi and the other one in Ghana. The Priori of the Orange Tree. Here she is. 
good. This is a fantasy. I've heard it compared to the Poppy War, which I really, really enjoyed, so I trust it. Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This is about a mystical kind of coffee shop where you can visit somebody that you went to the coffee shop with before in the past. You can travel through time, but you just have to return before the coffee gets cold, which is such a unique concept, and I can't wait to read it. Final Girls by Riley Sager. This is, funnily enough, my final book by Sager. A Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. This is about a woman that's on the spectrum. Hello. Me too. She hires an escort in order to try and understand romantic relationships better, and from my understanding, they fall in love. It sounds so good. Memoirs of an Imaginary Friend. This is one of the first books that I ever edited in my Goodreads TBR, and I only just got it this summer. This follows a five-year-old boy who has an imaginary friend named Budo, and it's from Budo's perspective. And I believe the little boy gets kidnapped, and so Budo has to try and help the little boy get unkidnapped. It straight up says on the back for readers who loved Room and the Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Wait, is this fucking play about us? All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dewar. It says, a deeply moving novel about the ways people try to be good to one another. This is a modern classic. I feel like everyone's read this. I can't believe I haven't yet. Breasts and Eggs, this is my second Miko Kawakami on my TBR shelf. It takes place in Tokyo. I know it's character heavy. And I've also received a few comments saying that they believe the main character in this one is neurodivergent coded. I don't know if that's true. Obviously, I haven't read it. Sweet Bean Paste by Dorian Tsukigawa. I was recommended this book so many times. It follows some family members. I hear it's really touching. I hear it's really heartwarming. I love cozy books, so it was a no-brainer to me. Where the Crowd Dad Sing by Delia Owens. Google it. The Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion. I see that the internet is really diving deep into her works lately, and I want to be one of them. I want to join the squad. Sign me up for the bandwagon, get me a ticket. However, this one is a nonfiction about her year after her husband's death, and one of the most obvious but biggest fears that I have is losing my husband, and so I haven't felt brave enough to pick this one up yet. I think I need to start with like play it as a laser or something. I don't have the strength at the moment. You and Me on Vacation by Emily Henry. I really didn't enjoy my time with my first Emily Henry. I read Book Lovers. I thought it was very flat, and so I haven't really believed any comment that encourages me to pick up this book. When people say that the characters contain such depth, that's what y'all said about book lovers. And no, they did not. In my opinion, of course, in my opinion. But I do like the concept of this one. It's about two friends who go on a vacation every single year. And so you see all the vacations over the years and they're supposed to go on one final one and they probably touch butts, I assume. Good Feminism Notes from the Women that a Movement Forgot by Mickey Kendall. This is required reading, in my opinion. Definitely something that I have to get around to as soon as possible because rich white feminism is what turned me off from feminism for so long. But that's just because that's not the movement. This one explores the many issues that white feminism ignores, disregards, does not discuss. A Man Called Ove by Frederick Bachman. In a past video, I asked the recommendations of books with autistic characters or books with characters who are very autistic coded, and this was recommended to me several times, so this is on the top of my TBR. There's also a cat on the cover, so you can't go wrong. The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. I picked this one up after seeing it on what April Reads' Instagram. A man and a woman go to get married, and they don't because of the best man, and then the original bride falls in love with the best man. Haters to lovers again. Where they burn books, they also burn people. So he bounced between the 1500s and 2010 and it's about how Catholics burnt Mayan books and also assumedly Mayans based on historical events. If you like indigenous revenge, villain origin stories, and the consuming force of religious fervor, then you'll love this illuminating tale about Catholicism's shadowed past. Look at it. Yes. Just yes. The Night Will Be Long by Santiago Gamboa. It's a story by a Colombian author. It takes place in Colombia. A boy witnesses a violent confrontation. An investigation takes place. Such a fun age by Kylie Reed. It's about a black babysitter who gets accused of kidnapping the child that she's babysitting. And it says a lot about the structure of American society, the inherent racism. And I also hear that it's written really well. The Answer is by Catherine Lacey. Lacey wrote Pew, which is a book that I gave five stars last year. I think that her writing is so unique. And this one is about a woman who's in debt. So she becomes one of the many girlfriends in an experiment of this famous actor or something. It dives into the depths of women's psyche. It sounds fascinating. With Teeth by Kirsten Arnett. It's about a woman who's afraid of her son and is just contemplating what motherhood means. Things We Say in the Dark by Kirsty Logan. I want to be the kind of person that can read anything. So sometimes I will buy books in genres that I don't typically reach for, so then one day maybe it will spark a light within me. This is one of those exceptions. It's anthological, but it seems really well done. Mother for Dinner by Shalom Oslander. It's about a family who eats their family members after they die, and so our protagonist's mother passes away, and you can put two and two together. And last but not least, we have Notes on an Execution by Danya Kukafka. This is a 
signed edition with yellow sprayed edges. I've seen it all over my bookstagram. When I saw this edition at Waterstones, it had to happen. It's about a man who's put on death row. It apparently raises a lot of questions around how we punish people for doing things that we do not condone. And what's a better way to do that? Is there a better way to do that? Everyone has been giving it five stars. So, ding. Ding indeed. Look at this. This really puts the amount of books that I have to read into perspective. And there you have it. Here are all the books in English that I have bought that I have yet to read. It's a lot. But also I read a lot. I can read up to 25 or more books a month, but also legally a lot of books. How many books do you have on your TBR? I haven't counted them yet, but I know that you've seen a counter in the corner. You know my book body count. <laughs> What's yours? Are there any books in the stack that were your absolute favorite? What book do you think needs to be read that I've shown you first above all others? And lastly, and I might regret asking this, are there any books that you feel are missing from the stack? And that's that. Thank you to everyone on Patreon who has made reading my job. I appreciate you so much. This stack is sponsored by y'all. So I'm gonna go put these back. And as always, thank you for clicking, thank you for caring, and thank you for being nice. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!